This is lecture nine of Logica Urachunaunishtvu, Logic and Computer Science. And we're going to continue what we were doing last week, which was looking at the model checking problem for linear time temporal logic, LTL. So last week we saw what this problem is. Um, we looked at a nice piece of mathematical machinery that was going to be used to, to solve the problem that was the notion of a, a non-deterministic bookie automaton and the related notion of a generalized non-deterministic bookie automaton and lastly we saw how to convert an LTL formula that's a linear time temporal logic formula into a bookie automaton that recognizes the language of traces of the formula. So it may not be clear, it, it almost certainly won't be clear to anyone exactly what all this has to do with the model checking problem. So let's start today. Um, so let me say actually firstly this lecture is going to be in two parts as usual. So in the first part we're going to complete how we do the model checking problem and in the second part we're going to look at some software that actually does model checking for, for LTL so we're going to look at it in practice in the second part. Anyway so for the first part of today's lecture um, we're going to now start by revisiting what the model checking problem is but doing so in a way that I'm, I'm going to explain the outline of the algorithm that actually performs the model checking problem. So let's, <coughs> so here's the outline algorithm. Uh, I don't like the way that outline looks. So outline algorithm or model checking LTL. So remember the, the input is a formula um, phi together with a, well let's put it in a different order, so we have a transition system M, a finite transition system, a starting state S and a formula phi and the question we are interested in so the question we want to answer we want to answer is does does it hold that that phi hold that the linear time temporal logic formula holds along every run through the transition system M from starting state S. So what are the steps for this? So, that, so basically we're going to have a three-step approach to answering the, the question and we already know how to do steps one and three so we, that's material we covered last week um, there's going to be a middle step that we still need to fill, fill in the details of this week so step one is we construct construct the, the generalized non-deterministic bookie automaton that recognizes the language of traces actually of the formula not phi so the negation of the formula phi um, so we so we construct the generalized non-deterministic bookie automaton curly a of not phi as defined last week. Now 
And having done this, we convert it to a non-deterministic Bookie automaton, an ordinary non-deterministic Bookie automaton that recognises the same language. So we then convert a not phi to an equivalent ordinary non-deterministic Bookie automaton a prime of not phi. So this means equivalent means recognizes the same language. And this how to convert a generalized non-deterministic Bookie automaton to a, a non-deterministic Bookie automaton is being done in the exercise classes. Um, recognizes the same language. So because, so these recognize the same language, the, the non-deterministic Bookie automaton and the generalized non-deterministic Bookie automaton, and that language is the language of traces of the formula not phi. So in other words, so note that NB, note bene, note that a successful run in the NBA A not phi. But I think I'll use the same terminology I used last week. So instead of a successful run, I mean an accepting run. In this NBA, well, it recognizes a trace that is in the language of not phi, is in the trace language of not phi. So, so a trace is in the language in the trace language of not phi if and only if it's not in the in the trace language of phi. So, in other words, because of the way that negation is defined, um, so an accepting run therefore corresponds. to a trace um, A1, A2, A3. Let me uh, let me actually for some reason start as I won't say, but anyway, start numbering from zero. Um, So it corresponds to a trace such that the important point is that this trace it's it's a trace for the formula not phi so it's not so that means it's therefore not it doesn't oh that's not an I keep on getting into a mess with my pen here that's it does not belong to the trace language of phi because it belongs to the trace language of not phi okay so that's step one so we just follow what we did last week for the formula not phi now the reason we use the formula not phi is we're trying to check whether phi holds in the transition system along every run starting from the state S. Um, so if it doesn't hold, then really what we need to do is find a path through M on which not phi holds. So we essentially want to find a path through M that if we take the trace generated by that path, that path belongs to the trace language of not phi or does not belong to the trace language of phi. So we need a way 
So we've, we've got a way of recognizing the trace language of phi with, with this non-deterministic Bookie automaton a prime of not phi. So we've got a, a way of recognizing the trace language of not phi. We want to use that automaton to find a path through M that has that trace, that generates that trace language. And to do that, we combine the transition system M together with this non-deterministic Bookie automaton A prime of not phi. We combine them together into a new non-deterministic Bookie automaton whose who's accepting runs will be paths along which paths will correspond to paths through M along which the formula not phi holds. So, the, so we're going to use a construction that combines the automaton, non-deterministic Bookie automaton A prime of not phi with the transition system M. So this is step two. And this part we did not do last week. So we construct a product automaton Oh, that's actually, it's not just an automaton, it's a non-deterministic Bookie automaton. So that's right, product, product NBA. Um, which I'm going to write using a kind of tensor notation. Doesn't really matter what the notation is, but we need some notation for it. So we're taking the automaton that recognizes the trace language of not phi, and we product it using this notation with the transition system M. And uh, the product is generated by a starting state in the transition system. So I'm going to put the starting state under, under this tensor sign here. So the construction this product automaton is given below. So this is the this is the one step of the algorithm we still need to fill in. And this but before we look at the construction of the automaton, we're going to we're going to see what its properties are. Um, so the point of doing this construction is that a, a successful and accepting run, again, let's use the same terminology, an accepting run run in the product NBA is going to well, actually let's write this in more general rather than an accepting run just accepting runs so the point is that accepting runs in the product automaton um, they're going to correspond to paths through M along which not by holes. Maybe I should say paths through M starting from state S. So let's insert that. Starting from S. That S is a bit messy.
So in other words, so IE, that is paths pi from S such that the path satisfies the formula not phi. So step three is going to complete the proof, the not the proof, the algorithm. Um, now, given that we've got this product automaton with, with this property, well, what we were trying to test at the start was we wanted to see, does phi hold along every path starting from S through the transition system M? So if it does hold, then that means that there will be no paths through M starting from S along which not phi holds, which means that the product NBA will not have any accepting runs. And the product NBA not having accepting any accepting runs means that the language that it recognises is empty. So we want to simply test whether the language of omega words, of infinite words of the product automaton, a a dash not phi, the product construction with that producted with the transition system, test whether this is empty. If it is empty, then that means the um, so if if it is empty, then that means there are no runs starting from S along which not phi holds. Then then return yes. So then we can return yes. Because in that case, it is the case that phi holds for every run through M starting from S. And if it's not empty, well, then we return no. But we can do more than that because uh, let me remind you that last week we looked at how to test a non-deterministic Wookiee automaton for emptiness and um, that was <coughs> excuse me <coughs> yeah. okay that was in the uh, first half of last week's lecture um, Oh, it's really quite a long way back. So let's call this proposition here. Testing an NBA for emptiness. Meaning the empty language. And remember, testing for emptiness meant looking in the non-deterministic bookie automaton from for one of these lasso paths starting from a starting state and going round in a loop where the, this particular state in the loop is an accepting state. So we need to go all the way back. 
So we test this. So we test the emptiness. Use the emptiness testing. Testing for an NBA, for NBAs from last week. And if it's not empty, we have a lasso path, um, which is a path, a path that um, is an accepting run of the NBA. Um, then we, so we return no, and and we have a lasso path, and we use the resulting the the lasso path given by the emptiness test the lasso path that shows non emptiness um, to extract a lasso goes like this, S0 to S1 to SK in M, where this is this is the starting state S that, that, that it should be. Um, For this path, the above the Sue path pi satisfies that pi satisfies the formula not by. And that finishes the algorithm, but the point is what this last step has done is it's answered yes, but in the case that um, in, in the case that, so it either answers yes if the formula holds along all paths, but in the case that it returns no, it extracts a path through the transition system which is a counterexample to phi holding along all paths. So this model checking algorithm actually gives us a counterexample path um, when it fails. Right, so what we need to do the, essentially, the only remaining thing we have to do is the construction of the product automaton in step two. So, so let me start on that. So, so I'm going to construct a product automaton um, A tensor S M where M is a transition system. I uh, don't know where that S came from. A M is a transition system, a transition system with state S. Some, so S is some state in the, in the transition system and A is an NBA arising, so we're only interested 
in those NBAs that arise in the algorithm, so arising as a prime of not phi for some formula phi. So in fact, there is a general product automaton that works for any non-deterministic bookie automaton here. Um, but uh, just to simplify things for the lecture, let's just restrict ourselves to the non-deterministic automata of the kind that we're interested in. And I shall put um, a little PDF note on the, um, on the web page about the more general product construction. So let's assume, so we have that M is of the form, um, so we've got a set of states, um, a transition relation, and a labeling function labeling the states, and, and A, curly A, is of the form Q, the set of states of the automaton, I delta F, so the initial state, the transition system of, of the, um, the final, the transition relation of the final states, um, where Q where Q has a, well, let's say, is an elementary set, an elementary subset of complemented subformulas of phi. So this is where we're restricting to the automaton given via the automata given as the construction from last week of um, the automata, the auto automata accepting the um, trace language of a formula because these then the states of those are elementary subsets. Um, so, so actually, in general, that gives us. So in general, that gives us a generalized non-deterministic Bookie automaton, and we've converted that to a ordinary non-deterministic Bookie automaton. In that converted automaton, it's not actually true that Q um, sorry, that, yeah, well this here I should have said is a set of elementary subsets. Okay, so let me just rewind a little bit. So the generalized non-deterministic book, non bookie automaton A not phi, its set of states is exactly the set of element of all elementary subsets of CS phi. We did that last week. We've converted this non generalized non-deterministic bookie automaton to an ordinary non-deterministic bookie automaton using a construction that's being done in the exercise classes. And that construction, the states are a bit more complicated, so they are not, they, they we now have more states in the ordinary non-deterministic bookie automaton. It's not really quite correct to say this is a set of elementary subsets of CS5. We've got a set of states where each state will have an associated set of elementary subsets of CS phi. It's a little bit, so it's a little bit fussy this, um, but anyway, we shall kind of basically pretend that our non-deterministic Bookie automaton, that the sets are sets of elementary subsets here. It's not a big pretense because when you construct the correct non-deterministic Bookie automaton from a generalized one, you basically see that every state has an associated set of elementary subsets. Anyway, carrying on from where we are, then the 
then the product automaton has as it states. So its states are given by pairs of Q and um, and and F, and then a little and a, so pairs of states one coming from the um, one coming from the uh, book, the bookie automaton A, that's the Q, and the other coming from the transition system S. Um, so in order to not get confused about notation here, I'm going to make, I'm going to write a little S0 here. So we've got a transition system together with a chosen starting state in it, S0, that now I can use S to talk about arbitrary states in the book yield in the um, transition system. So what we ask for here is that Q is a state from the um, from the book yield automaton and S is a state from the transition system. But every state from the transition system has a labeling function, giving it its set of propositions that label it. And every state from the bookie automaton is a set of formulas, has a set of, of formulas, which are all subformulas or complemented subformulas of phi. So it's an element, we have an elementary set of Sub for complemented subformulas of, of phi. And what we ask is that if we take the atoms, so the, 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 the atomic formulas um, from the propositional atoms from the set Q, then the set of atoms is exactly the set of atoms that we get in the state S, in the labeling function of the state S. Um, we're only interested those of those atoms that are in the complemented subformulas of phi. Okay, so that's the product automaton, that's its states. Um, so that might look quite complicated already. But let's have a look. So what we're going to do, so EG means here's an example, we're going to product Um, so we're going to product our bookie automaton, our example from last time, our NBA curly A of the formula A until B. So this is curly A of A until B, constructed above. So it was constructed last week. With the transition system with a particular transition system. Um, so this transition system is going to look like this. S0, 
test one. So test one, propositional atoms A and B are both going to be true. At test zero, only A is going to be true. So just some random transition system or, well, randomly chosen to illustrate this product construction in a nice way. Um, so this is going to be our starting state S0. And here we have the state S2. And at this state, we're not going to make any, no propositional atoms are going to be true. And at this state, we're going to have, here we're going to have a state and we're going to make just B true. So it doesn't really have any computational, particular computational significance, this transition system. I don't have a story explaining what um, the propositional atoms A and B mean. But nonetheless, let's call this one S3. Nonetheless, it's a perfectly good transition system. Um, and we're going to product our automaton for the formula A until B, constructed above with M, with this transition system M. OK, so our states of the product automaton are going to consist of pairs given by a state of the automaton we're using as the factor of the product um, and a state from the transition system, but in such a way that the atoms in the state from the starting NBA are the same as the atoms that we're labelling. Well, we're only interested in atoms that are complemented subformulas of the formula phi, but here our formula phi is A until B, so A and B are exactly those, the atoms that are complemented subformulas. So let's look at, so here we had five states. Um, so for each of these states, we can pair it, we can pair that state together with a um, any of the states of the transition system that has exactly the same atoms, positive atoms in it, so non-negated atoms. So let's write our five states out. Um, so they were, so we'll go down, I won't keep on going back and forwards, I shall just do it from um, my notes. So, um, so we're going to have the We have the A not B A until B. So we have that set. And we compare this, we can pair this state with any state from the transition system whose labeling function has exactly the set, the element A, just the single element A. So that's just S0. So actually I've I kind of chose the labelling function here to give me as little work as possible. If I had several states that had just A in, then I would need to have a copy of this paired with each one of those several states. But fortunately, I've only got one. So uh, not fortunately, I engineered things that way. Um, so this, I think it was S0 has A. So here we have S0. And then we had here we had a not b not of a until b. And again, the labeling function here is just a. The only atom, sorry, the only atom we have here is a. So again, we compare that with. A set that a state here whose labeling function contains just A. So again, we pair this with A. And then up here we had before not A, not B, not A until B. And now here we have neither A nor B, so we need states that have the empty labeling function, and that's just S2. Pair that with S2. 
And over here before we had um, the set A, B, A until B. So now we compare this with sets that have with states that have both A and B in their labeling function, so that's just S1. And there was just one more state in the non-deterministic bookie automaton for um, the formula A until B, and that was not A, B, A until B. And uh, the, then, so now we've just got B, and that can, the only state we compare that with is S3. Okay, so these are the states of our product automaton. Of course, the next thing we want to know is how to connect the states of the product automaton. So um, let's see if I can add a page in between. See if this works. Maybe these are this is adding page at the end. So well, I've now added a page at the end, but I should be able to hopefully rearrange. Let's try like this. There we go. Um, right. So here we've got the example automaton, the product automaton we've constructed. We've just got its set of states so far. Because of the way I chose this transition system, we didn't have to duplicate any of the states we had in the original automaton. Each one was paired with exactly one state. Now we want to see how to connect them with, with the transition. So the transition relation. So we're going to have a transition between Q and S and Q prime and S prime. So this is each of these pairs is a state in the product automaton. And because we're now we're building a an automaton, this needs to be labeled. Um, and again, we want it to recognize a trace language, so it's going to be labeled with a set of atoms. So we have such a transition, if and only if. Well, the point is we need to have both a transition from Q to Q prime in the original or in the original non-deterministic bookie automaton, um, curly A. So we need to have, and this needs to have the label A. And also we want to have a transition from S to S prime in the transition system. So we need to be able to make the step in both the bookie automaton we're building from, the A, curly A, and also the transition system that we're building from. So now if we go to our example, so we can potentially have Transition systems from any of the S0. Oh, sorry, I've realized that was probably confusing when I wrote it. Don't know how that ended up like that. that this should have been S0 again here because S0, its labeling function gives us A. So we can have a transition from S0 to any of the states that involve S2. So we might have a transition from S0 to here, and also from here to here, but only in the case that we also have transitions in the original, in the original automaton that's way back, that I shall just go back to quickly here. So we were looking, can we go from here to here? We can't, so there's no transition like that, but there was a transition from here to here. So when we have the transitions in both places, then, then that's okay. So going back to our example, so we were looking S0, S2, there was no transition up here in the 
So in the transit in the transition system, we have potential transit from the transition system, we have potential transitions from here to here and from here to here. But in the automaton, there was no transition from here to here. So we end up just with this one. And this is labeled um, with the label that comes from the bookie automaton. And that's, remember, the label from the bookie automaton is the set of atoms in the source state. So in the bookie automata of the form that are recognizing the trace of a the, the trace language of a of an LTL formula. Um, so we've dealt with the S0 to S2 transitions. Let's do the S0 to S1 transitions. So there's only one state S0 to S1 here. We check to see whether so so here we have a transition in the um, transition system from S0 to S1. We also do have a transition from this state to this state in the bookie automaton. You can look back at the picture to check that. So this goes to here. Um, and then again, this is singleton language. The singleton set A is the um, symbol that's accepted here. Plus, um, because that's the set of atoms in here. And let's maybe do one more. Um, so, so S1 to uh, let's see. Maybe, yeah, maybe we'll do S1 to S0. Um, so we need, so S1 is here, so we've got potential, so S1 to S0, we've got a potential transition from here to here and a potential transition from here to here. And we see whether such transitions were there in also in the original, oh dear, and just put a line in the middle of the page, let's rub that off. Um, and indeed they were in both cases, so we have transition going down here to AB. So this is AB because it's labeled from here and also across here. BB. And um, we've actually got almost all the transitions there in place now. Uh, there's the one that goes all the way up here. I'm not going to talk through all of them. So of course this has a, so it's label. Normally one would actually not write all these labels on in this case because the labels are perfectly well determined for this kind of construction by the state we're starting from. So we're always taking the label as the set of all atoms in, in the starting state. I'm just um, right, doing this to write it completely here, but you would be perfectly, it'd be perfectly reasonable not to write it. Here we have the empty set because there are no atoms here. And there's also the self loop here. Um, so this. And that is all the transitions, as you can check in the transition system. So, in fact, it looks very like this picture. Um, so, we're following exactly the same transitions as long as the automaton supported them. And um, the only thing is we've We've got the S0 state appearing twice here because we had two different bookie automaton states that could be paired with it. Right, okay. So we've done the transitions. Um, the final. is just the sets of all those pairs Q, S, where Q belongs to is a final state of the starting bookie automaton. So in our case, the final states of the, let's go back to the, it's a bit of a way to scroll uh, again, but still I do want to have a look at the picture. Um, must have gone past it. Y 
wasn't such a way to scroll after all. Uh, here we go. So the states were, the accepting states were all these four states, just not this one. So again, we're going to have these as final states. And the corresponding states, all states that are labeled with those accepting states become accepting. So here, here this is, let's again make accepting states green. So we get these four accepting states. And this one. So there's the final states and the initial states. So these are as Q. Now this time we have a particular chosen starting state in the transition system already, which was our little our state little s zero. And at the initial states of the constructed product automaton are pairs where we have an initial state of the of the bookie automaton, of the original bookie automaton curly A, paired with the starting state of the transition system. So starting state of the transition system. Um, so the starting states of this original transition system, I won't scroll back because it, I always seem to get lost when I do, um, but the starting states of the original transition system were this one, this one, sorry I should put, the, it's the set that, that's important in the original, sorry not the original transition system, the original bookie automaton were this, for A until B, there were this one, this one, and this one, but only one of those has the starting state um, S0 paired with it. So that is our only starting state here. So we go to go here. So let's use a purple to have our arrow for the starting state. So this arrow coming in means this is our starting state. And that is the bookie automaton. So that's the product bookie automaton. And we now, basically having seen how that's done, we've completed our algorithm. So hopefully there's space here to now give the explanation for how this example works. So example. We illustrate the algorithm on the model checking question. So the question we are answering is, does M from state S0, does every path satisfy the formula not A until B? So step one, we construct the non-deterministic bookie automaton that accepts the trace language of the negation of this formula as above and convert Well, and we would no normally convert to, that would give us a generalized non-deterministic bookie automaton. We would normally convert to a non-deterministic bookie automaton, an ordinary non-deterministic bookie automaton, but this is already an ordinary non-deterministic bookie automaton. So there is no need to convert to, and, or let me say this is already, there's no need to convert because it's already an NBA. In this case, B. 
this is already an NBA. So step two, we construct the product of the non-deterministic Bookie automaton we've got from step one with the transition system governed by starting state S0 and that's what we do as below. So we've got that on the page down below, that's what we've just been doing. In step three we check for emptiness. And the language is non-empty because we have a lasso. There are many lassoes. There's one that goes here and back and here and back. And then we're going through this accepting state infinitely often. There's another one that goes here and hit round and round and round and round. And we're going through an accepting state infinitely many often. Um, infinitely often. So we have many so there are many accepting runs of the of the um, product automaton. So so check for emptiness. That means language emptiness of the product automaton. And the answer is no. The language is not empty. And the lasso with, with, for example, the lasso, so one example of the lasso is this one. So firstly, the S0 state, so we have uh, let's write it up here. So we had um, a not b a until b s zero and this goes to not a b a until b s three Not A, B, A until B, A until B, S3. And then it had a, a trivial one step loop back to itself. So we've got this lasso, and we use this to extract a lasso in the transition system. And we do that by simply taking the, just projecting out the states from the transition system um, in the obvious way. So the, the second elements of the pairs, I just want to make my three look like a three. S three. So we extract extract then the lasso S0, S3, in M. And this gives us counterexample. This gives us a counterexample. That's a pi, a path, a path pi in M, starting at S0. such that this shows that the property we were checking, not A until B, fails. So, we, so 
that this was considered. So it's a, par a counter example path that shows us that the property we're checking not A until B, that fails. And the point is this path This path then satisfies A until B. And so it shows that the original module checking question, the answer is no, because we have a path that satisfies the negation of the formula we were interested in. So let's just check that. So if we go, we start at S0, we go to S3 and we go around it, then does A until B hold? Well, A holds here at S0, and then we go to S3 and then B holds and then it keeps on holding, but so in, indeed A until B does hold. Um, right, so this is the, I think the end of the model checking, let's we'll just write a square there to say that's the end of the example of the model checking. Um, let me just, Say here, I just want to clarify this is example of the product of this automaton constructed above with this transition system. Okay, so, uh, so we've completed the algorithm with an example. It's, um, as you see, the details are quite fiddly to do by hand, which is, uh, of course, why one wants a computer to do these details for you. And it, it would be absolutely impossible to do with hand as soon, to do by hand as soon as a f the formula is at all interesting. So expressing an interesting property. And especially when the transition system evolved has thousands, if not tens of thousands, or even more states, which is the kind of scale at which model checking algorithms can be run in practice. So having seen the theory behind it, um, we're going to look in the second half of the lecture at uh, some model checking software and see see that, see uh, how a model checker works in practice. Okay, well that's enough for now, so bye for now and um, we'll be back shortly. <laughs>